welcome to The Allison Show. I'm Allison, and this weekly show is all about having fun and feeling a teeny tiny bit more awesome than you did before. I'm here with Julie. I didn't want to hit you in the face. I liked it though. Hi. And um, the first take of that that we did was me laying like this in despair, singing Hello, darkness, my old friend. Um, but after... We decided to rally. After... Well, I would say, do you decide to rally or do you rally? We naturally... Like, in the process of showing up, I feel like we naturally rallied. Because now we're feeling a lot better. We do feel a lot better. And so, one of the questions we'll immediately get into is how to not quit. We gave ourselves permission to not rally. We also gave ourselves permission to say that this was our last show ever. Mm -hmm. Which means what, Julie? We get a kiss. <laughs> we also gave ourselves permission to... Um, show up and do the show, I said, I don't have to perform happiness. Mm -hmm. So then because I was feeling down, I was like, well, I'm going to show how down I am. But then it was like I was performing downness. Mm -hmm. So I'm not performing anything. We're just here. And that, when you feel like you have to perform, it is exhausting. Yeah, because it's not your authentic action. Which is like, you don't feel safe which is why you feel the need to perform. It's not because you're like a fake, non-authentic person. It's because you don't feel safe right. or you feel fear. And so I think giving yourself um, little breaks to not feel fear. So now we're going to have some fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we thought it would be really fun. We're going to do show and tell. Talk a little bit about what we watched this weekend. And it, today is Martin Luther King Jr. Day. And we have special guests. Our first guests. Our first guests. And like the best first the best ever. ever. Some of our favorite, favorite people to share with us some thoughts and ideas about how we can make Martin Luther King Day a little more meaningful. This year, um, our friends Alexis and Shantae from Let's Talk Sis, I spoiled it. Julia has a special talent that she has been hiding from all of you. Get warmed up. Julie was showing me some lip tricks. The ones I can show in public. I saved some for private. Okay, so Julie, show us some of your lip tricks. Well, there's this one. <laughs> this one's the one that comes most naturally. I've done it my whole life. She can talk in this voice and she can do expressions. I could emote. In this face. I could live okay, my whole life. So show me mad. <laughs> show me stressed. <laughs> oh, it's pretty authentic. <laughs> show me annoyed. <sighs> Show me. You just gotta flex the corners. I would love if anyone else could do it. Cause... Show me you want to quit, but you're not going to. <laughs> can, you, can you even believe that? I think seductive is. The I'm best trying way. to do it. Okay, seductive. <laughs> I, I, I can't do it. Okay, wait. How do you do it? Let's do a lesson. Flex the corners. <laughs> I really can't do I've it. I've never met anyone else that can totally do it. It's My children special... can like kind of do it, but. Okay, so in the same vein, you can do a crazy, um, another lip trick that is phenomenal. <laughs> this one, like. It makes me. I just feel like if I were to get lip fillers, this is what it would look like. I don't feel like other people look like this. Okay, show me mad. Show me happy. <laughs> it's only sarcastic, this face. <laughs> how do you do that? It's like, um, Melania is what, how do you say your name? <laughs> is that kind of it? You can got it? I can't, but I can't hold it. Like how you talk, like. It's just I, like a push down and turn up. <laughs> okay, everybody, let's give it up for Julie with these lip tricks because these are for my show and tell, I just have some crap I've been making. No, some like beautiful uh, art. <laughs> so I've been working on my embroidery and I thought I would share. I've been getting quite a few um, questions. So the first question was a lot of people were asking me what I do with all the embroidery. And I, I started making it. I started when I was like 12. No, 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 like 10, like even younger. Um, always been very, very crafty. And I just got to say, I'm really good at it. You are. It's I, insane. I, no, I'm like really good at craft. Like in general, but like, I, it's mind blowing. Which I would get really discouraged because I'd go to art classes. 
And I was never like a star art student, mm -hmm. so I didn't think I was a good artist. That's a metaphor for life. Um, I love to embroider on wool crafting felt, and I brought a piece of it. Actually, wool crafting felt, I buy, it's kind of expensive. Like, it's made with the wool. Um, it's not like the cheap stuff you get, like, at the craft store. Um, and so it's, it's really beautiful. Um, and then I just put it right on the hoop. And so this is an example of like the gifts I gave everybody is I wrote like a little prayer for everybody, for their heart, for their heartbreak. Say and a little prayer and put it in your pocket. What I'm doing, this one is for me. And I did my focus for 2021, this idea of embracing, embracing the crone, mm -hmm. the shadow, the light and the dark. And then I'm just putting different symbolism all around that means something to me perf uh, personally, which says a lot about me. I've got like the sacred heart. I've got yin yang. I've got the Wiccan triple goddess. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I like religious fluid fluidity. Fluidity. That's up my alley. And um, people getting started. Thread Honey, Jen Riggs. I I think this is the best beginner embroidery book. It's beautiful. And she used to do graphic design for the Allison Show, and now she's got a very successful other career. So if you work with me, you go on to stardom and fame. Take take that big to the things, bank. Big things are ahead for me. <laughs> okay, so now to ce celebrate Martin Luther King Day, um, we are going to give some time to our friends Alexis and Shantae from Let's Talk Sis for years. Like since they've been in high school, they've been working on diversity, unity education, anti-racism education, and we have been working with them. We're working on a project with them, also learning from them. Really excited to have them talk a little bit about Martin Luther King Day so we can approach it in maybe a new way. Hello, we're Let's, Let's Talk Sis. I'm Shantae. And I'm Alexis, and we are sisters. And we are passionate about having the conversation surrounding race and diversity and human connection. And our goal is to help people learn a little bit more themselves so that they can teach their children. Because we found that so many of these important lessons and conversations need to happen within our home. Yes. And at Let's Talk Sis, we are really passionate about challenging not only ourselves, but our followers to look at history from a different perspective and a different viewpoint. So with today being Martin Luther King Day, we want to we want to kind of put out a challenge and talk a little bit about why it's so important to look at different viewpoints in history and different contexts. So we have been researching so much. We have been trying to learn oh, there's a lot. and unlearn maybe what we knew and we've been trying we to figure out <laughs> yes, way more about this and understanding different key people during this time and the context that some of these quotes that everyone seems to share around Martin Luther King Day. We love <laughs> quotes from Martin Luther King It's like, what was going on during that time? Why right. did he say that? What were other maybe parts and pieces of that that we don't share and why? And are we really understanding why he said what he said? Or are we just using his quotes because some of the pieces make us feel good or they fit the narrative that we are trying to portray? And I think that's a really good question to ask ourselves as we share his words. So we are asking all of our followers and any of you who want to join us is today, before we share a quote, let's do a little bit of research. Let's look in to see what was going on. What was he thinking? Like, what inspired him to speak the words that he spoke? So if we can all share maybe what we didn't know because we've taken the time to look into it. Right. Then that might even be better than just sharing a quote. Amen to that. So if you want to come along and learn a little bit more, come over to Let's Talk Sis. We're going to dive a little deeper. We are going to dive deeper. And thank them for that for that video. Make sure you follow them and support them. And then they have a challenge to, to leave something that you learned. And we want to encourage you to do that on their feed to the, boost them up. Boost them up and show They're them that so you support wonderful. them. They're wonderful, wonderful humans, and we're so grateful to them. So we have a little bit of time for Q&A, um, and we started off with a great question about not quitting. Not quitting. <laughs> <laughs> Something we know about. <laughs> and um, honestly, I really do think the thing for not quitting is um, give yourself permission to show up imperfectly. Mm -hmm. Uh, just like we were talking about with anti-racism work or checking our biases, give yourself permission without, without shame, which shame is really so addictive. Mm -hmm. And what happens is shame and blame are a cycle. So, um, oh my gosh, I'm worthless. I can't believe I didn't realize this. I can't believe I didn't know this about Martin Luther King. I can't believe I didn't know this about my neighbor. I can't believe I ate all weekend and just watched, um, 10 hours of a discovery of witches. <laughs> 
And rather than waking up this morning and just being filled with so much shame and self-hatred, hatred, be like, I did the best I could yesterday and it might not have looked real cute or pretty or I did the best I could for the last decade and parts of it were really awesome and parts of it I can see rooms for improvement. Um, that's how you not quit. You can only go forward if you don't shame spiral what you've done. And that is, I mean, that is a really real practice mm -hmm. of um, meditation, journaling. So I just wanted to share an example last week. So I've uh, been kind of spiraling back down into the, into the dark places and I start getting really upset with myself mm -hmm. that I'm doing it again. Oh, you got over this, you journaled, you went to therapy, you did all the things, why are we still feeling bad about this? Okay, so that's, that's something to notice. And so as I was just witnessing that last week, um, it was my good friend, Jessica Dahlquist. It was her birthday. She she's does the, the best. She's the best. She does the Extraordinary Moms podcast. And um, I called her for her birthday. And she called me back and we talked for an hour. And after I got off the phone, I felt so good. <laughs> she is like light. But also, she's just one of my oldest friends. And I haven't talked to her. And I was like, it's so ridiculous how... Talking to a good friend on the phone made me feel so much better. Yeah. Because I talked to Julie and she's a good friend. I had just, I had seen Alexis and Shantae. I had talked to them. They're good friends. I had talked to my friend Ashley. Um, but talking to one more friend and not about all the things that were even upsetting me or bringing me down, but just laughing. Feeling like safe, loved, and connected. Yes. Combats um, a lot of negativity. Because here's the thing is like, I think we're all in a place right now of like, we were sad about the pandemic and we're sad about racial unrest and the election and there's good things to look forward to, but there's work that still needs to be done. And there's this and that. And then we're just mad that we're not just over it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we're burnt out. I mean, <laughs> but this is freaking exhausting. This is a lot right now. Um, it's a lot always. Life is a lot always. And what the space and quiet did is um opened up a life's worth of things you've never addressed yeah so um one other person asked um what to say to friends who are struggling nothing seems to help is to remember you might be trying to carry too much responsibility and i don't mean like oh you don't need to say anything um if nothing seems to help and you're just beating yourself up because there's nothing you can do for that friend as my good friend susan peterson likes to always say to me you can't want more for them than they want for themselves and i take that and i go i can want it but i can't force it on them yeah and i think you don't always <laughs> like if you're so fixated on the result of helping it might like alter how you show up. Like, yes, just continue showing up and showing love and showing support. And that doesn't necessarily have to translate into the help the way that you see it. And I think so often we think of help as fixing mm -hmm. or changing or giving tactical, tactical advice when really I think, um, the holding the space mm -hmm. for man, I, I am so, so that sounds awful. Mm -hmm. I know you're strong and I know you can carry it. But I'm really sad and I'm really sorry that you have to. And I just want you to know, like, I'm on your team and I'm cheering for you. Take that script, write it down. It applies to everything. And Julie and I are saying it to, to you right now. Um, it is just life. And let's see if we can manage a little more peace, a little more joy, a little more compassion, compassion. a little less shame. I was reading, um, Brene Brown was writing about the attacks on the Capitol and she was like, if I, as a shame researcher, I would, <laughs> she's like, I would love to get out there and shame people, even though I know how much it can hurt them. And I feel that. Yeah. And she's like, the problem is I just really, really know it doesn't work. She's like, there's no evidence to support that shame works. There's no evidence to support that shame works in changing other people. And there's no evidence to support that shame works in changing yourself. Yeah. As you continue to do it for yourself, you're going to have the space and capacity to hold other people's pain and show up for your friends and just not feel the need to fix because you're not trying to fix yourself all the time. You're just showing up yeah. and, and loving yourself. So we hope that serves you. We're really grateful to do this show. We really are very grateful to do it, even if sometimes we didn't feel like doing it. Um, and we're, mo we're so grateful for Let's Talk Sis. Please follow them, support them. Let's participate in their challenge today. Julie and I are both doing it. And only you can be you, and you're already as awesome as you need to be. Love you guys.